I found something really bad. And I have been... Petty. Who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Taken. Um, oh, <clears throat> I haven't been offered many superhero roles, to, oh. to, to, be, to be honest. Um, but I haven't actually looked at wanting to do them either. Um, apart from, I've been really lucky to do Bane uh, with Chris Nolden, so that, that was kind of the end of that uh, in many ways. And then Mad Max was something which was of its own uh, in, a, <clears throat> in a similar world for me as, as the kind of um, um, fantasy genre characters larger than life. So superheroes didn't really appeal to me because for the best part they do a bunch of rubber hat wearing, spandex sort of wearing, um, like we're wearing figure skaters who who sort of do good and that's not really I, I don't really enjoy this the symbolism I get the symbolism but I really enjoy that um, type of storytelling uh, personally but I subsequently have been father now for 10 years and they I, the resonance of superhero movies to to my children has profoundly changed the way that I see uh, the genre, uh, and actually, I, I'm now much more not just sympathetic, but I've been drawn into it. The specificity of having a character like Venom appealed to me because it dealt with um, the dichotomy and the paradox of the human condition specifically. So even if it wasn't a superhero movie, I looked at uh, when I read the script, I was like, "Oh, this is great!" I'm just like talking to my head, and uh, and I have a, a an alter. This character has a an ulterior, uh, an alter ego, or a. Um, who's symbolic of self-will run riot or addiction or uh, sort of what I would do if I could do when I want to at any given time. And I think that that's what the difference between a superhero and Venom for me is that it's the manifestation of, of willfulness uh, in a very primal way, living rent-free in a human who has to reorganise his ethical framework in order to, to live alongside this beer moth of psychosis. Um. Yeah, but you know, the thing is, when you're playing um, someone who is billed as a villain, you don't see them as a villain yourself. You know, I don't think my character is a bad guy. I think he does some bad things, but I think everybody does some bad things. And actually, that's one of the things that's interesting about this movie is that, you know, there are no clear-cut goodies and baddies. <clears throat> you know, there's uh, obviously we're rooting for Venom, and we should do, but... Um, he isn't exactly great. Yeah, is he? <laughs> Eddie Brock is someone with a questionable kind of moral track record, and and so is my character. And they're both kind of doing their version of what they think is good, you know. So really, you don't tap into your kind of dark side. You just tap tap into a kind of desperate hunger to try and do the right thing, you know. Which might be counterintuitive, but it's just you just slightly tweak your idea of what right is. Which I think is a fair reflection of society, and it, more so over than the virtuous superhero, which is doing good and is unblemished or doesn't have any flaws. I don't. I think fundamentally, human beings, what makes them so interesting and and, and for want of a better word, beautiful, is that they they're imperfections. They're the 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 paradox of the human condition. Ultimately, we're all flawed, rather than it being a monster or a demon within us. Mm. It, it's just that we engage uh, obstacles with certain like, characteristics, and some of them aren't as. Um, aren't better than others. Do you know what I mean? So with the yeah, we've the deck all got you've flaws. Given, you know, we've all got flaws, and so yeah, this enhances that. That's what know. this this film really plays on that as well. You mm. know, yeah, it's like there's a Jekyll and Hyde element, and then there's a slight like, Jaws element of when's the monster coming, and you know, uh, the unpredictability and the shock and surprise, and, and I think there's something there's an existential terror um, which is underrides the symbolism of of the characters in, in some aspects, and then there's the there's a, a, a natural element of horror which is what it's like to get a tropical disease or be infected with something that turns out to actually really be ludicrously a, a, a alien, you know, and then explaining to people that you have an alien in you, you no know, one in real world, but that would be a really hard sell if, you know, I don't know, Theresa May tried to explain to us that she had a 700 pound alien living in her, unlike, we wouldn't believe her. Some people would. Well, some people would, but it would be a hard sell for her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I think that there, there lies uh, sort of the elements of tonality of horror, terror, uh, comedy, um, and 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 it's compelling. I would, it would be compelling watching Theresa May explain to us that she actually had a, an alien in her.
I mean, I want to hear what you have to say about this, but the way I try, it's, it's not that different to um, doing anything. When you do anything, you 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 know, there's people that you don't want to let down. People have expectations. You want to do a good job. Really, this is just amplified to, you know, by a million times because comic book fans are the most diehard fans and we're living in an era of like, you know, the, the you know, where comic books are the staple that, you know, that we're drawing on to tell stories in, in, in cinema. So... For me, I think you just have to kind of, you know, respect the legacy, respect the inheritance, and this film does that. You know, it's based on some, uh, you know, core comic book storylines, which is the Lethal Protector and Planet of the Symbiotes. So we've respected that, we've done that. And then after that, you have to just close your eyes and jump and recognize that you're never ever, with, no matter what you do, you're never gonna please everyone. So you have to let go of that straight away. But as long as you go, in it, go into it with good intentions, you give it 110%, that's all you can do. And having seen the film myself yesterday, I feel really, really confident that people are gonna respond to it because um, Venom is insane. Is awesome. You know, that character is insane. And what Tom does with that character, in terms of infusing it with that humanity and comedy as well, and the physicality of the role, you know, which Tom is, is you know, can, can do in a way that's just, I mean, look, just wait, wait till you see it, man. I'm so it. I think people are going to be into it personally. I, I think so too, and I think you're absolutely right. Is that you can't? On, on the one hand, you have to care enough to not care what people think when you're when you're in the middle of the bed trying to trying to create something. Yeah. Uh, if, if we obviously massively care about everybody's opinion, not just die-hard fans, but also you've got to break a bit of new ground and diversify and bring more people into and and. <clears throat> and play and create new stuff but uh, some people aren't going to like that some people are going to say actually I love that progression of the character that's mm. not the orthodox and traditional but then it's a it, it's a 2.0 that I'm prepared to go with and actually I, I really enjoy the journey that we're going on with this character some people go no it's not for me I'm, I'm a traditionalist and that's okay too but the main thing is is that do you recognize your venom there you know, to the hardcore fans I think we, we we've worked extremely hard across all, all, all the departments to to deliver the the, the, icon, the iconic character of Venom. And yeah, he's deconstructed in part with this, there's a whole Spider-Man missing, you know. Mm. But that doesn't mean that that's a, that's a problem to, to people who don't have a problem with it. You know, it's an, it, it's a, <clears throat> and that doesn't mean that Spider-Man is, is off the table altogether either. That doesn't mean this isn't a massive great campaign for Kevin Feige to buy us and put us in Avengers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean anything. What it means is that Venom hasn't been brought to screen and we've worked our asses off to, to bring the best version of that to the table and we care hugely about what the fans think. We also care about new fans too and we also care about Venom. Look into my eyes, Eddie. The way I see it. We can do whatever we want.